How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the NordVPN application. So the NordVPN apps share the same overall appearance and functionality across both mobile and desktop platforms. The consistency is nice. You won't experience a learning curve when switching devices, and the design ties everything together quite comfortably. <clears throat> Once you start up the application and log in, you're greeted with a stylized world map that is dotted with trees, boats, and these little dots here, which represent the countries or servers. You can zoom in and out as you would like, and uh, it's pretty intuitive overall, especially for brushing up on your geography real quick. Of course, you can click on any of these dots to connect to whatever, ser whatever server you would like, or you could just hit the quick connect and it will connect you to the best server uh, as determined by NordVPN. And while the map is attractive and simple to control, the location pins or dots here can get a little bit crowded and hard to select if you're zoomed out. Uh, so particularly in server dense regions like Europe, there are no country labels either. So you'd have to just kind of zoom in and figure out, especially if you're a little bit rusty on your geography. But then again, I'm not going to complain because, uh, you know, in a way you are brushing up on your geography as you try to figure out which dot belongs to which country. So uh, I'm not going to complain much here. It's more efficient, though, admittedly not as visually appealing to use the app server list rather than the uh, map itself. The alphabetical list allows you to pick a country and see the server locations within it. From there, you can choose, for example, whichever server you would like to use, depending on load. Uh, and if uh, certain countries, let's say, have more than one location, like let me go to the States, for example, you can pick a, let's say, Salt Lake City, and you'll pick whichever server suits you best based on load, for example. So that is pretty handy. And whichever server you were connected to, you will find all of them in the recents right here. Uh, and if there's, let's say, a special server or a certain server that you would like to always connect to, you can just, let's say, uh, remember the number and you'll be able to just kind of look it up. So I'll just put in 1452 and I'll get that server immediately, which can be nice if you would like. Um, now, you can't add it to a favorite list, but having numbers is pretty uh, useful. So that is pretty cool. Now, if you go to the settings, you'll see toggles for various options, starting with the general. You have your cybersec. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a dark mode here. At night, it could put a little bit of strain on your eyes because of the bright background. So what you can do is either make it smaller. Um, I would really appreciate a dark mode, though. So uh, this is definite. I, I use a dark mode in every single application I can use it on. So definitely would like to see it in the future. So again, we have an ad blocker here. You got auto connect. Uh, of course, the selection of protocols here, I would definitely recommend using NordLinks at all times, uh, since it's the it really makes NordVPN the fastest VPN in the industry. You've got an internet kill switch and an app kill switch. The internet kill switch will disable your internet connection when the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. The app kill switch will disconnect selected applications when the app disconnects or when the uh, VPN disconnects unexpectedly. Split tunneling will allow you to choose which applications go through the VPN tunnel and which don't, which can be very useful. And in advanced, you've got custom DNS and obfuscated servers if you're having trouble connecting to regular servers in a censorship heavy country like China. So obfuscated servers will just be servers that are only available on the OpenVPN TCP. And notice how when I turn on obfuscated servers, I will uh, have only the obfuscated servers available on my uh, map. So keep that in mind if you ever turn on obfuscated servers and wonder why all of your servers are gone. It's just because the obfuscated server option was on and now you have access to all of your uh, servers again. So yeah, it's a pretty simple UI. If you, if you go onto the mobile application, you notice that it is literally just almost the same exact UI here with the map and everything. You just zoom in, pick your specialty servers, whatever it is, it is incredibly similar. So you don't really have any trouble using the mobile application. If you're coming from the desktop, you can just download it and you'll know how to use it right away. So that'll be it for this video. If you guys are interested in learning more about NordVPN, you'll find a review 
down in the description, which will give you more of an in-depth look into the privacy policy, speed streaming, torrenting capabilities, as well as security and features. And if you guys are interested in NordVPN, and if you guys are interested in getting yourself a NordVPN subscription, you'll find links to special deals and discounts down below. So feel free to take advantage of those while they last. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.